Monster Walks. Woohoo! Oofla Lotuk, everyone. It's me again, Penny. And um, how is everybody doing today? Uh, my sister's birthday was yesterday. She was supposed to come here this past weekend to hang out with me, but she got stormed. And we've been having really shitty weather lately. But, um, so she's supposed to come in this coming weekend. So I'm really excited because I live in Nome and she and my family, most of my family, they live in Kotzebue, which is like a little further north than Nome. So it's a little bit colder and the night times in the winter stay darker. And in the summertime, we have, you know, more of the, the daylight. So that's how we roll. I'm so excited for the summer, spring. You don't even know. So I am finally getting out of Nome. <sighs> Since like springtime. So I'll be going to Hawaii with my sister and her family in um, end of April. And I got the okay from my bosses and everything. And I'm so excited. I've been to Hawaii a bunch of times, but I've never been to Maui. I've been to the Big Island. I've been to Honolulu, but yeah, never been to Maui. So that's going to be exciting. So I've been trying to work out for it, you know, get prepared, get my beach body going on. That's been the worst part because I, I love to eat. Uh, I've been um, trying to go on this like egg fast, but all it does is give me really bad runs. But I guess that's how you lose weight, right? You lose a lot of fucking water weight and then you gain it all back in like two hours. So anyway, I watched a movie called The Monster Walks. And it was made in 1932. But um, in the movie, they mention, I, I guess it takes place in 1925, I think. I think I remember a part of it that said that. The movie starts off, it, they're in a, there's a bedroom. And there is a body in bed with a sheet over it, like over its head and everything. And this man and this woman are looking over the body and they open it and they're just like, hmm, like, oh, poor guy. And the, the guy, that was that was standing there. He's like, his death was very sudden, Mrs. Krug. Yes, sir. He was alive last night when I brought him his supper. This morning, Hans found his body. Your son? Yes, sir. What happened? And the lady. She's like, I don't know. He was fine last night when my son brought him his supper. At that moment, they hear like this sound. It was like this monkey sound, like this ape sound. And the guy's like, what the fuck was that? And she's like, oh, that's uh, Yogi. Uh, the master's pet ape. And the guy's like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah. Uh. But I thought he had disposed of him. No, sir. Do you mean to say that that animal is in this house? Yes, sir. Mr. Robert had Hans lock him in his cage in the cellar. He's been kind of hysterical since his master died. Uh, the guy goes downstairs, and there's an old guy in a wheelchair down there. And the old guy in a wheelchair, he is uh, the master's brother. And um, the master... The, Oh, the wheelchair guy, he's like, do you want to, you, you want to go see Yogi? I'll show, uh, the fucking lurch, the, the lady's son, he's like this big, kind of slow, kind of quiet guy. Yeah, he's like lurch. But anyway, he's like, My, he can take you. I guess his name's Hans. Hans will take you down. And so he goes down there and, um, to the, the cellar to go see yogi <laughs> so they go down there and it's an actual fucking live ape down there it's a chimpanzee like an older older chimpanzee you know when they're not super cute anymore you know like fucking bobo or whatever 
it's now this big menacing you know dark scary looking ape and it's just like pacing back and forth in that in a cage and the poor thing he's got like nothing in the cage it's just him and the cage like there's no toys or a blankie or a stuffed animal or even food that i could see it's just like the, the fucking ape pacing back and forth and the guy the guy um hans the lurch guy he goes so there he used to have a mate but uh the guy that died was like a scientist or something like a doctor and he did experiments on them and the <clears throat> mate died during one of the experiments that he did on the ape he says he only gets kind of hysterical when ruth shows up because he didn't like ruth and ruth was his master's daughter who had moved away she had, um she's got a fiance she hasn't been home in a while but since the guy died he has to have his will read so that's why the guy that was looking at him you know like the, the guy hanging out with lurch and everyone his name is mr willis and i think he's like the executor of, of the estate or something he's supposed to read the will and um ruth is supposed to come back that night um for that whole process he was the doctor's favorite yogi had the run of the house he knew every nook and corner but was there no danger miss ruth was afraid of him but that's because he was always jealous of her so that is why she went away <laughs> i suppose she had other reasons for wanting to get away from this dreary old place and then uh yogi starts acting all crazy just like rah, 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 just like like acting all nuts going back and forth you know banging his fists and everything <laughs> There's someone coming now. But how do you know? He always acts like that when there's somebody arriving that he knows. Oh, uh, Ruth comes. Ruth comes and she's in like this, like, black car. And there's a driver. And uh, Ruth comes in and she's with her fiancé. And his name is Dr. Clayton. So he's a doctor. And uh, their driver, his name is Exodus. And it's like a stormy night. So uh, Ruth comes in. She runs over to her, you know, her uncle. And she's sad about the death and everything. They talk for a while. And then her fiancé was like, okay, well, I better be going. You know, I got to go to the inn where I'll be staying. It's like, okay, your fiancé's dad just died and you're just going to fucking leave her. Okay. And Ruth is like, no, stay, please stay with me. Um, she had to like pretty much beg him to stay. Then he's like, okay, fine, I'll go get my things. And he goes out to the car and he goes over to the driver, Exodus. And uh, he tells him that he's staying What's there. That? That's Yogi. What's the matter with that man? He must be in misery. His master is dead. Where? In there? Well, well, you, 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 you told the bank in there. I've got to fix on this generator and the spark plugs. Yeah. Uh, Clayton goes back and he gets his stuff, and Clayton goes back inside. Um, Exodus brings his stuff over there, and they're just chilling. They're just talking, you know, da da da, da making small talk. But this whole time, it's like. Is that body just chilling in the bedroom? Like, there's no ambulance coming to get it. There's no, like, grave people. No coroner. It's just chilling in the bedroom and then everyone's there. Uh, they get all their shit in. And the, the daughter goes up to look at her dad's corpse. And she, uh, she looks in there, you know... And she said she's scared. She's 
She's scared for her life, but she doesn't really know why. She just has a weird feeling. Has a weird feeling. And fucking Frau. I don't know who the fuck this bitch is. She's... They don't really say at first, like, who exactly she is. I know her son is basically their butler. Um, so she, she's, she has to be some type of, um, I don't know, paid, you know, she has to be the, the fuck do they call them? Help. She has to be some, something like that. I don't know. Maid or some shit. But I don't know what her name is. Miss Coop something. Anyway, Frau. She's like, no, we'll get you set up into your old room like before and you'll be fine. Frau goes into the room to get her, you know, shit set up. And then her son comes in and he goes, I'm going to tell them now. Now that he's dead, it should be known. And she's like, don't be a fool. We may be turned out. And he's like, haven't it, hasn't it been long enough? She's like, no, wait until he say the will. Then we will get, you know, what we deserve. And she's like, we may be rich. The uh, Clayton, he goes over to the driver. You know, he's got to tell him that they're staying there. And um, the driver, Exodus, he's like. Oh, mm. Exodus, yes, it's out clean. Get the bags out of the car. We're staying here for the night. Well, isn't that what them cops said? You know, Dr. Clayton, I think I'll go for a walk. Go to a movie or uh, uh, play some peewee golf. Nonsense. You can't walk to the village in this storm. It's 11 miles. <laughs> Did you hear that? Get the bags out of the car. I'm going to go. I'm going to go see a movie. I'm going to go take a walk. I'm going to go play peewee golf. Anything but stay here. <laughs> Dr. Clayton wants to leave, you know, um, go back, go to his room. So the Frau lady shows him where his room is at. And she told, she tells him that my son will show your, your driver where he can sleep for the night. Come with me and I'll show you where you can sleep. Where's the dead man at? On the second floor. Well, I'll sleep in the cellar then. That's where Yogi is. You mean that man at the house, oh? Well, you give me an umbrella and I'll go up on the roof. Come on. Where that dead body at? Hans is like, come with me. Come with me if you want to live. So, the poor guy, Exodus, has to go with the guy, with fucking Hans. They read the will, and Ruth, she basically gets everything. She gets $50,000, which in 1920s or 30s was like a lot, probably millions, you know, and because uh, she's the only heir to that fortune and uh hans will get like 50 dollars a month and his brother gets to live um and is cared for in his house until he dies and i can't remember what frau gets i don't know probably the shit end of the stick hans so he finds his mother later on and he's just like he's livid he's really mad it's like this ain't fair we can't just be getting that. We're getting shafted. And the mom is like, it's okay. Our master was a good man. Things will be set right. Later on, Exodus is in his bed. He's in his nighty and his, he's in his bed. And he can hear Yogi freaking out, you know, running around in his cage, being all crazy. Yogi man sure is mad about something. If he's going to yodel all night, ain't nobody going to sleep. If he's going to yodel all night, ain't nobody going to sleep. <laughs> uh, there's Ruth, and um, she's talking to her um, frow lady. And 
and um you know she's she's putting her up for her bed she puts her in her old room it was kind of dumb because she's like where am i gonna sleep and then the lady's like um you're gonna sleep uh oh yeah lurch is like where do i put all this shit and then she's like oh put them in her old room where else was she gonna sleep well the the old guy did kind of mess around with their rooming arrangements for reasons i don't know he wanted to be sleeping in the bedroom closest to his dead brother ruth her posture sucks she's just like hunched over like so and it's just uh looks really painful yeah she needs to look at sit up straight or she gets <clears throat> just scoliosis or something lurch oh sorry hans goes in and talks to um his uncle no the uncle sorry the uncle and he's mad he's just like what the fuck why did we get shafted um you know just pissed off just like rah, 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 rah. and um they're in the bedroom with ruth and um mrs krug fucking frau and um they're talking and there's this picture on the wall and it's so fucking obvious the fucking picture just like moves to the side and there's a gigantic fucking hole where someone's eyeball is sticking out like how the hell could these bitches not notice it it's so obvious but they're oblivious and they're talking and you know saying whatever and the, the picture is just like, whoop, whoop, like yeah I don't know it must be the morning process I don't know her her fiance goes into his room puts on his uh Hugh Hefner robe goes and sits down is about to chill out for the night and but it looks like Robin Williams' arm comes out and turns off this candle and cuts to Ruth, Ruth's bedroom. And that same hairy arm comes out and just, you know, comes out behind the bed and tries to touch her. And she wakes up and she sees it and she lets out this like ear piercing scream. They're running around and they went and looked at Yogi because they, they, cause, um, Ruth said it was Yogi because she saw the hairy arm. They go down and Yogi is still in his cage. He had not escaped. <laughs> and Exodus comes down <laughs> and he's wondering where Dr. Clayton is. He's like, you know, Dr. Clayton, like looking around for him. <laughs> and he's like, I bet he's down there getting Mr. Yogi his pill. <laughs> Exodus guys gem he's a gem <sighs> and exodus okay so he went and he looked down into the basement and he sees yogi you know freaking out running around in his cage so exodus turns around and he's running off and on the on the floor there's like a polar bear rug oh there's yoga Miss Yoga, please don't do it this time. Don't bite on this time, Miss Yoga. Tell me loose, Miss Yoga. I leave you. I ain't never coming back here no more. What is all this nonsense? What did you say, Yoga? Wilkes. He's talking to Dr. Clayton um, by the fireplace, and he's telling him that, you know, you know Ruth just had a nightmare. She's fine. She's fine. She'll be all right. Dr. Clayton was at the fireplace and he's looking around. And he sees this unsmoked cigar and he remembers that right before he went to bed, he was talking to Mr. Wilkes and Mr. Wilkes had said, I'm going to stay up for a moment and um, smoke this cigar. And Dr. Clayton's like, okay, well, I'm going to bed and He's like, all right, and then he went to bed. So anyway, flash forward to this moment and he finds this unsmoked cigar 
and that makes Dr. Clayton a little suspicious of um, that Mr. Wilkes guy. So we hear the violin playing, and it's that tune. It's like, it's like that. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, little baby. And he's like, they see an outline in this door, and they go in, and it's it's uh, Hans. Oh, I guess it's Hans. Uh, Hans said, well, you know, it couldn't have been Yogi because I had, I had locked his cage from the outside. I mean, Yogi has been known to get out of the cage by picking the lock, but I locked it with a chain from the outside. So, you know, it's not Yogi. Hans, has that animal been out of its cage? No, sir. The lock hasn't been touched and everything is the way I left it. So Hans had said that he heard shuffling in the cellar before he heard uh, the scream. Okay, and they're like, what about Robert? So Robert is the uncle. Robert is Ruth's uncle. And then, because they're trying to figure out who could have done this. And um, no, Mr. Wilkes, he's like, well, Robert hasn't walked in a year, so this, it couldn't have been him. We cut to Mrs. Mrs. Krug's room. So, you know, Mrs. Krug is, she's, um, Frau. Well, this bitch, I don't know. Never really figured out who she was, but we'll figure it out in a bit. Um, to her room and... Just like in Ruth's room, there's a hairy hand coming out from behind the bed. And this time it gets a hold of her neck. And she slowly just suffocates to death. She does not put up too much of a fight. And Ruth, Ruth is the one that finds her. She actually like runs up to her and she's like, she goes and looks at her and... Kind of just was like, does she put out a scream? I can't remember. Anyway, the bitch faints. She faints. She faints and the guys come, you know, to go rescue her. Um, Dr. Clayton, you know, he, he does not think it's Yogi. And um, they can hear Uncle Robert ringing his bell. He, he's in his room just like, must be nice. I shot a fucking bell when I was a kid, sick and fit. <laughs> Well, so Robert was acting kind of, you know, like disturbed, like asking for Mrs. Krug, like, hey, uh, you know, I, I, I've asked, I'm asking for whatever her name is, Mrs. Krug is kind of a little bit suspicious of Robert. And the scene cuts to um, Hans. He goes to the dead lady's room. So he goes to Mrs. Krug's room. And he, um, they had put the sheet over her face when they found out she was dead. And so he goes over there and he like peels it off. And he looks at her and he's like, <gasps> like he kind of like freaks out and acts really like, <gasps> like shocked and sad. And all that, like, what happened? Like, why? And then he, he starts crying. So it turns out, well, Hans was actually. Story goes, they thought, like, you know, we had we have this maid come in, and she already had a son. They just let them live at his place, you know, to serve him. So. Hans is Robert's son, the brother. So they told the master that he was just some illegitimate kid of the maids and to let them stay there and he'll work, you know, he'll work for the master. But he's actually, yeah, Robert's son. Yeah, big surprise, right? <clears throat> the Hans guy, he thought it was Ruth that was in the bed. 
because the lady, Frau, slept in the bed because um, Ruth said she wanted to stay up and read a book. She wanted to stay up and read a book. And um, so she's like, no, you go ahead and go to sleep. I'm going to stay up and read this book. And that's when um, Hans came in and he thought that he thought that was Ruth, but it was his mom. And so he strangled the wrong person. So Exodus runs in. And one of the guys goes, hey, uh, do you have a revolver in the car? <laughs> and then he, Exodus is like, this? He just like pulls it out of his person. And he's like, oh, shit. Yeah. Here, have you got a revolver in your car? No, sir, I got it right here. So if you can mess around with me, I'm going to blow a hole right through his foe coat. Cool. Cool. Come along with your revolver. No, sir, not me. Shaw. Sure. Give me that gun. Well, that's gonna be another dead one. They're leaving, like Exodus get, goes to the car, and the, the lurch guy, Hans, grabs Ruth, and he fucking picks her up, and she faints again. Of, of course she faints again. These bitches always faint, like, Oh my God! Is that is it, was was that a thing back in the day? I mean, did it like die out or something? Because I've never fainted, but I, I've also never been carried away by a crazy person or almost strangled to death by a hairy arm. So who knows? Lurch takes her down to the basement where um, Yogi is. Han says that he did it. Um, the the guys, Clayton and Wilkes, go to um, his room and they find a hairy arm. Like I don't know if it's like a like a glove, like a glove. It was like this long glove, like with a hairy arm thing. <clears throat> he tells Ruth that you know he is Robert's son, so basically he's her cousin, you know, and. Um, the violin music that they found, it was a recording. So it wasn't even him playing that, you know, go to sleep song. It was a recording. And Lurch, or Hans, goes out and he's like, you know, fucking with Yogi. And Yogi reaches in there and grabs his fucking neck and just, like, grabs him and just, just suffocates him. Exodus says, <laughs> so him and Mr. Wilkes are talking and Mr. Wilkes is telling him that um yeah the doctor he found out that you know apes I don't know he's doing research and stuff about how apes and you know, humans are distant cousins you know they're relatives excuse me boss I want to do one of them things around the house well, Dr. Elton was an exponent of the Darwinian theory. Huh? He believed that they were our ancestors. You mean that he's related to me? Exactly. Well, I don't know. I had a grandfather that looked something like him, but he wasn't as active. Ugh! And then it cuts. <clears throat> That's the end of the movie. <laughs> so, that was a pretty... It wasn't a very long movie, but it was entertaining. Um, of course, Exodus was by far the best part of the movie. was cute little one-liners. Uh, the whole whodunit scenario was pretty cool. Um, I felt bad for the ape. I know back in the day, like, like even even Milo and Otis times, they didn't give a flying fuck about the animals. They would fucking toss kittens off of cliffs and oh, they did all kinds of jacked up shit to these animals. And I'm pretty sure back in the day, even the U.S., it was animals were still mistreated and whatnot. But 
I don't know. I didn't do any research on this ape. But it basically didn't do much. It just, like, freaked out in its cage. It was, it was fine. It was fine. But it was all right. Uh, I'm going to give this movie... You know, the last movie I got gave was a six. I know I had been drinking wine most of the night and I got pretty fucked up because the movie was sucky. The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. I gave it a six, but I don't think I should have given it a six. No, I should have given it like a two. But this one, um, since it, it wasn't excruciating and it wasn't hard to follow at all, I think this one deserves a 6. Or a 6.5. I think I'll give it a 6.5. <sighs> so that was... The fuck was it called? The Monster Walks. I don't understand that title. I, did they mean the actual monster wasn't... What do, what do chimps do that they, I wouldn't say they crawled. They kind of like, just kind of swing around. Oh. So I think they're implying that the monster was a biped. So it was like one of us. But I feel like chimps and gorillas and stuff, like other great apes, bonobos maybe. They're not technically bipeds because they do a lot of shit on their hands. And if it walks, doesn't that mean it's a human? I don't know. You could say a lot of things walk, even if they're not biped. Right? I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was short. It was sweet. It was to the point. And this time I didn't have a mental breakdown. That is awesome. <sighs> All right.